The first great king of Babylon was King Hammurabi. He conquered all of Mesopotamia and established the first Babylonian empire. Hammurabi also established a set of laws that is today called the Code of Hammurabi. How do we know about Code of Hammurabi? The Code of Hammurabi was written down on clay tablets and etched into stone. It is one of the oldest recorded codes of law in the world. One of the best surviving examples of the code is written on the diorite steel. Diorite steel. The diorite steel is a large stone shaped like a giant finger. It is about seven feet tall and two feet wide. It contains around 4,000 lines of text describing 282 different laws. At the top or fingertip of the steel is carved a picture of King Hammurabi being given the laws from Babylonian sun god Shamash. The actual code of law was divided up into groupings. Many of the laws that had to do with one subject, that is slavery, were grouped together. This would have helped people to find and read just the laws that pertain to them. Here are some of the major sections of the code. Prologue, legal procedures, household laws, slavery, trade and business, religion, epilogue. The prologue introduced the code. The prologue describes how the god Shamus gave the laws to Hammurabi. Here's an excerpt from the prologue. Bring about the rule of righteousness in the land, to destroy the wicked and the evildoers, so that the strong should not harm the weak, so that I should rule and enlighten the land, to further the well-being of mankind. In the epilogue, Hammurabi restates his desire for justice for all, saying, let the oppressed man come and stand before my image as king of righteousness. Let him understand my words and his case, so he will understand what is just and his heart will be glad. Examples of the laws. Many of the laws describe exactly what a worker should earn. For example, one law states that a sailor should be paid six gur of grain per year. Some laws were very harsh and the penalties severe. If a son should strike his father, his hand shall be cut off. If a man put out the eye of another man, his eye shall be put out. If any man should strike a man of higher rank, he shall receive 60 blows with an ox whip. If a builder builds a house for someone and that house collapses, killing them, then the builder shall be put to death. What makes the code important? The code itself tells archaeologists a lot about lives of the people of Babylon. It also contains some important ideas like having people provide evidence of a crime, innocent until proven guilty, and protection for the weak. Interesting fact about the Code of Hammurabi. Shamash, who is featured at the top of the Diorite steel, was the Babylonian god of law, justice, and salvation. The Diorite steel is called Diorite because it is made from a type of black rock called Diorite. The diorite steel was originally found by archaeologists in the ancient city of Susa. Today it can be found in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. The Code of Hammurabi is one of the oldest and longest deciphered writings in existence. The code was written using cuneiform script and the Akkadian language. The imagination is literally the workshop wherein are fashioned all plans created by man. The impulse, the desire, is given shape, form, an action through the aid of and the imaginative faculty of the mind. It has been said that man can create anything which he can imagine. Of all the ages of civilization, this is the most favorable for the development of the imagination because it is an age of rapid change. On every hand, one may contact stimuli which develop the imagination. Through the aid of his imaginative faculty, man has discovered and harnessed more of nature's forces during the past 50 years than during the entire history of the human race previous to that time. He has conquered the air so, so completely that the birds are a poor match for him in flying. He has harnessed the ether and made it serve as a means of instantaneous communication with any part of the world. He has analyzed and weighed the sun at a distance of millions of miles and has determined through the aid of imagination the elements of which it consists. He has discovered that his own brain is both a broadcasting and a receiving station for the vibration of thought. And he is beginning now to learn how to make practical use of this discovery. He has increased the speed of locomotion until he may now travel at a speed of more than 300 miles an hour. The time will soon come 
when a man may have breakfast in New York and lunch in San Francisco. Man's only limitation within reason lies in his development and use of his imagination. He has not yet reached the apex of development in the use of his imagination faculty. He has merely discovered that he has an imagination and has commenced to use it in a very elementary way. Two forms of imagination. The imaginative faculty functions in two forms. One is known as synthetic imagination and the other as creative imagination. Synthetic imagination. Through this faculty, one may arrange all concepts, ideas, or plans into new combinations. This faculty creates nothing. It merely works with the material of experience, education, and observation with which it is fed. It is the faculty used most by the inventor, with the exception of the one who draws upon the creative imagination when he cannot solve this, his problem through synthetic imagination. Creative imagination. Through the faculty of creative imagination, the finite mind of man has direct communication with infinite intelligence. It is the faculty through which hunches and inspirations are received. It is by this faculty that all basic or new ideas are handed over to man. It is through this faculty that thought vibrations from the minds of others are received. It is through this faculty that one individual may tune in or communicate with the subconscious minds of other men. The creative imagination works automatically in the manner described in subsequent pages. This faculty functions only when the conscious mind is vibrating at an exceedingly rapid rate, as, for example, when the conscious mind is stimulated through the emotion of a strong desire. The creative faculty becomes more alert, more receptive to vibrations from a, the sources mentioned in proportion to its development through use. This statement is significant. Ponder over it before passing on. Keep in mind as you follow these principles that the entire story of how one may convert desire into success cannot be told in one statement. The story will be complete only when one has mastered, assimilated, and begun to make use of all the principles. The great leaders of business, industry, finance, and the great artists, musicians, poets, and writers became great because they developed the faculty of creative imagination. Both the synthetic and creative faculties of imagination become more alert with use, just as many muscle or organ of the body develops through use.